Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Wars The Old Republic video. Uh, if you guys have been watching or keeping updated with my channel, you would know I'm here on vacation. I didn't really plan on making any videos, but there was some new data mine information released and I really wanted to talk about it because we got uh, the new data mine information regarding the new cartel pack as well as a few other items that are, that are going to be coming to the cartel market sometime later. And doing these types of videos have always been really constant with my channel. It's been something I'm always really excited to do and talk about. And so I did want to keep that tradition going. Uh, I'm still here on vacation for like one and a half more weeks. So if I waited all that time, it, it would kind of suck. So let's talk about these items right now. And I'll try to get this video up as soon as possible. And we're going to start with the um, Steadfast Champion Cartel Pack. Now this is a new cartel pack that was both data mined, but also the in-game preview is available in the game. So if you jump in your collections tab, you go into the shipment 9, and then you look at the newest Steadfast Champion Cartel Pack, See that it lists out all the items that are going to be available out of it. Uh, so there really isn't any data mining needed anymore, but uh, I would love to actually show you guys that footage, but as I mentioned, I'm here on vacation. I can play Swota on my laptop, but I don't have all the recording software set up, so I'm just going to have to put up the images and talk about it. But if you guys want to go check it, check it out for yourselves in the game, you can go ahead and do so. You can actually preview how all the armors and mounts looks on your character. Uh, also, just secondly, please excuse any background noise or the mic quality or anything. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm here and I'm just trying to do the best with what I can. Now the first thing you'll notice about this cartel pack is that it basically has absolutely nothing in it. It has one and a half pages worth of items. It is easily the least populated cartel pack. And so um, I'm personally thinking that it's actually incomplete. Bioware hasn't completely updated what they're going to put in it. But if they do actually end up releasing it like this, it's probably going to be similar to the Visionary cartel pack which similar to this one only had a few items in it. It might be something new that they're trying. I personally really support this. I love it when they don't just, you know, uh, push a whole bunch of trash into a cartel pack like with this one you'll see we only have two armor sets one of them is gold one of them is silver we only have four mounts no bronze mounts uh, the pets are actually not reskinned so it's actually really cool and innovative i quite like this style but enough talking let's get into what actual items are coming out of it the gold armor set out of this pack is the mandalorian tracker uh, now this one's just kind of another generic mandalorian armor set the helmet looks pretty generic it, i would it's not a reskin at all like i haven't seen this helmet model in the game right now but we do have just a ton of other mandalorian helmets what's really cool about this armor set is indeed the upper body armor now while at first look it just looks like a generic upper body armor that you can find a ton of in the game uh, it does seem to have a visual effect associated with it for those of you who don't know what that is there are armors in the game where once you unsheath or activate your weapon a visual effect is somehow generated now we've seen a lot of these appear recently uh, the last cartel pack had one and then we've also seen some hit the um hit the cartel market as well like the port nowhere mobster armor set so bioware seems to be returning to these i really love that i think these are the coolest things and with this particular one the visual effect looks actually really amazing it seems to me from the image that when you activate your weapon a little uh, thing's gonna pop out from the back like the shoulder cannon animation for the power tech and it's gonna shine a red light so basically it's very similar to the relentless hunter helmet which i've raved about in my videos beforehand uh, the relentless hunter has a little addition to your helmet where once you activate your weapon a red laser shoots out from your helmet i would have loved to show this footage on the screen but once again I don't have access to any in-game footage, but um, it's a very similar thing except the red laser this time pops out from the back of your upper body armor. So that's going to be a really cool addition. Um, and needless to say, it goes really well with the whole Mandalorian theme and the title of the armor set itself. It's the tracker, you know. So that's going to be really cool. I'm not a fan of the color. It's a green color. I really hate that. It, uh, they also did a similar thing with the Vile Hunter armor set. Uh, they like to give us this green color, but that's not so much of an issue because you can always just put a dye over it. And most people are probably going to do that anyway. So all in all, a really cool gold armor set. Now, surprisingly, we don't have any other gold armor sets from the preview that is available in game right now, but we do have a silver armor set. Now, this one is the Intrepid Knight's armor set. I thought this was going to be gold because the upper body armor is pretty fantastic. A lot of people don't like the cape. I totally understand that. I think this would have actually been much better without the cape, but I think we should be happy there is no hood because recently Bioware's just been giving us hood after hood and that makes people even more aggravated. So at least they listen to us on that front. Um, the upper body armor itself is very similar in style to like the Satil Shan or the Jedi Strategist. So we've seen this type of style beforehand. It's been very popular, sold really well on the GTN. So I do see this one selling really well as well. There's a very distinct style with the um, with the arms, you know, where one arm is covered and the other arm is sleeveless. So that's going to be pretty cool. Overall, it's just a really nice design. As I mentioned earlier, I thought this was going to be gold, but they decided to make it silver, which is really cool. I'd like to see more of these armor sets that are super nice going silver. And that is it for armor sets right now. 
Um, so going on to the weapons, I'm not going to talk much about these because there really isn't much to say. We have the Inscrutable Blaster Pistol, the Inscrutable Blaster Rifle, and then the Inscrutable Sniper Rifle. I'm not a fan of these weapons. Uh, surprisingly enough, there actually is a lot of the people uh, I've seen on Reddit forums and stuff actually really happy about these. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. I'm not too much of a fan of them. Um, you know, they just kind of seem really generic to me. We have so many of these types of models and games, so I definitely term these things junk in these cartel packs. It's just a lot of stuff that are going to keep popping out that are not going to either sell well, also they're not the best to use. But those are what the weapons look like. Now I'll show you guys three more weapons. These have also been data mined. They're probably going to show up in the next cartel pack after this one because normally Bioware only puts three weapons in a cartel pack. But these are like the uh, the cannon version, the lightsaber version, and then the double saber version. So once again, not much to say, but those are the images. As expected, we will see the tithe lightsaber and then the tithe lightsaber pike show up as the platinum items. Uh, so yeah, once again, very popular, very cool platinum items that um, if you get them, you totally hit jackpot. Okay, going on into the mounts. Um, what's different from this one is we have two gold mounts and two silver mounts, no bronze mount, which is really awesome because the bronze mount really tends to be trash. Uh, they never actually give us a really cool design when it comes to bronze. Uh, the first gold mount is the Vectron Predator. Uh, very obviously, it's an homage to the Slave 1, which is Boba Fett and Jango Fett's uh, ship from the prequels. And also, I guess, in the uh, Empire Strikes Back as well. Uh, what I don't like about this mount is that, obviously, it doesn't go vertical, so it will remain horizontal. So while it is very similar in design, it's not going to give you the full feel. It does have a flourish associated with it as well, which is pretty cool. I can't really tell what that flourish is going to be. Uh, normally flourishes don't tend to be the coolest thing in the world unless they're like something like with those recent um, uh, tanks where they actually shoot bolts out. Those are pretty cool flourishes. This one just seems a little bit underwhelming. But uh, nonetheless, it is going to be a nice, cool, and unique design that is more than what we can ask for because uh, we have seen worse. So all in all, pretty good. The second gold mount is the Arctic Gundark. Uh, this one I'm not too crazy about. Okay, overall the design is actually pretty cool. When I first saw this, I was like, wow, that's actually pretty menacing. Uh, would work really well with Sith and stuff. But it's just that with the Strategy Alliance pack, we had a gold version of a Gundark as well. That was like the Jungle Gundark. It didn't do too well. It still doesn't do too well in the GTN, meaning it's not the most popular mount. Uh, so I don't really see this one being that popular as well. But um, yeah, I mean, like, I think with the Monolith, the Rancors, those are a lot cooler. So, and those Rancors you know, a Rancor tends to drop as low as 2 mil on the GTN, so I see this one dropping even lower than that. So it's unfortunate, but it's, I'm not going to say it's a bad design, it's a really cool design actually. It's just not the most popular with the player base. The first silver mount we have is the Gurian Dune Hopper. Uh, now this one's actually a new design. I haven't seen a lot of these recently where Bioware doesn't just reskin. Uh, they actually gave us a pretty cool new unique design. I was expecting this to be a bronze mount, turns out they did decide to make it silver. Uh, it's just kind of like a hunk of junk. I mean, you're just sitting on a piece of junk and flying around, I guess. But as I mentioned, it's a unique design, so uh, that's pretty cool. And then the other silver mount is the Regal Vorn Tiger, which is a Vorn Tiger reskin. Uh, they just made the color green, which I'm not too fond of. And then they added in, I guess, some new stuff on its back. Um, they're just doing the same thing where they take a gold mount then they reskin it. Like they released two versions of these Void Tigers in recent cartel packs. They made them gold rarity. Now they're giving us a silver version that isn't really much different, which is kind of a middle finger to people who uh, wanted the gold version and thought they would have something that's unique and cool. But nonetheless, you know, it's a trend that we've seen and we're going to continue seeing, right? Going on into some of the other miscellaneous stuff, we do have the ice blue color crystal. Um, meh. That's all I can say. It's it's a meh crystal. Like, uh, I, don't re I really don't know what to think about it. Um, it's just not a really cool color. I feel like I've seen it before in the game. Probably haven't, but it's just so similar to the, the other stuff. I don't really see anyone using this. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if anyone could tell me what's special about it, like, maybe, I don't know. Because sometimes I miss it, like, crystals have actually been asked for by the community, and then I'm thinking it's a really ugly, bad crystal, but in reality, a lot of people have been wanting it, I'm not sure why, so maybe there's something special about this crystal, or maybe a buyer where it's just giving us a crappy color or something, I don't know. But that is the color crystal that is coming. Going on, we have two new pets, and as I mentioned earlier, surprisingly enough, these are not reskins. We have the Juvenile Nathema Spawn and then the Juvenile Dusk Ackley. Both of them are silver rarity. Now, these are just kind of miniature version of the mounts, uh, which um, I'm not, I don't care about because normally I don't care about pets, but at least these are not just reskins. Like These are actually new pets that people don't have right now. So for the pet collectors, it's going to be pretty cool. Also, they're probably going to sell a lot better than the other pets on the GTN because uh, for people like me who open the cartel pack not want to use the pets, but uh, maybe we can fetch a good, uh, pretty 
you know, penny on the GTN because uh, people are probably going to be willing to pay more for these since they don't actually have any version of them. So that's pretty cool. And then the flare. The flare is probably the best item out of this pack. It's the sign of havoc. Uh, really cool gold flare. Uh, pretty awesome for Republic players because um, we haven't really seen a, a, a good Republic flare recently. The last one was the Corrupted Command flare, which is obviously meant for the uh, Empire characters, probably for like you know Sith Inquisitors and stuff. So this is going to be a really cool one for troopers, obviously, but then also probably any Republic player. This is going to be a big seller. So definitely that it's going to be a jackpot item out of this mount, out of this pack. We are getting a new emote with this pack. This emote is called OMG. It is going to be Silver Rarity. It does seem to be um, an homage to Darth Vader's big no <laughs> loud thing from Revenge of the Sith. Um, it does kind of seem like that. I'm not sure how it's going to play out in game. Overall, I'm not too crazy about it, but um, you know, it's going to be cool. You know the excited child dance emote from the last cartel pack? That one I've seen still selling on the GTN for like 2 mil. So that one is a huge jackpot emote. That one's also only silver rarity. So if this, if that emote is any indication, this one might actually sell for a lot. Who knows, maybe new emotes are just going for more. But uh, it could be a big money maker. And then we have the companion. Now this one's going to be, be the I-08 operator, obviously gold rarity. Uh, this one's been a long time coming. I mean, everyone kind of expected that uh, this was going to show up at some point in time as a companion. It is going to be the Iocath one, so that's going to be pretty awesome. I do see this selling for probably a lot. All right, and that ends the pack preview for the Steadfast Champion Cartel pack. As I mentioned earlier, not much in there. Uh, we have had some data mine information way back that I talked about in other videos, and those items still haven't shown up. So maybe they're planning on putting those items into this one. I'm not quite sure yet. When we have a full updated preview, I might do an update video. But these are what we have right now, and pretty exciting. Um, you know, I might not have shown it in the video, but I actually really like this cartel pack. Uh, the armor sets are awesome, the mounts are okay, but the emote, the flare, and the companion will really bring up this entire cartel pack. And the fact that it isn't chalk filled with junk is an awesome plus point. Um, now I'll talk about some of the other data mine information that uh, these, now these items have been data mined. They were thought to be in the new cartel pack, but now it seems like they're not going to be. But um, I'll just talk quickly about them anyway. This video is turning out super long, I'm sorry for that, but let's just quickly talk about it and go through it. Firstly, we have the Recon Trooper. Uh, now, it seems as though this armor set probably looks better in the picture than it actually will in game because it seems as though Bioware is kind of updating how they uh, showcase these images. Uh, I do think from the picture itself, this is looking like a direct sale purchase from the cartel market. Uh, but all in all, it doesn't seem too good. I mean, like I feel like I've seen that upper body armor before and the helmet is just not really, I don't know, like it's not saying, oh wow, this is an awesome helmet I need to buy. I feel like you could find so many better versions on the cartel, uh, on the GTN that, um, that might not even be cartel market, just stuff that people craft. So not, you know, not the craziest, best um, armor set. I mean, if they showed up as a silver one, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really care. But if it's gold or something or a direct sale purchase for a thousand plus cartel coins, I would definitely not purchase that whatsoever. On another side note, uh, here are some event images. Now, these are armor sets that you get from events. It does seem as though Bioware is going to be putting these in your collections, meaning if you've unlocked the entire armor set, you can claim it from collections on all of your characters. You can destroy them to clear up inventory space and then reclaim them later. Uh, these were images that are now new collection images. So um, that's just kind of a nice little quality of life thing for players who do the events. Now also, it's been data mined that we're getting a ton of new dyes. I was pr quite excited when I heard this, but then I saw the dyes and my excitement died down. A lot of these are really yellowy, orangey stuff that's probably not going to either sell well or look nice on your characters. I'm just totally disgusted by these colors, uh, so it was really, really disappointing. I thought maybe we were getting some more cooler dyes with like the black and white shades and the gray stuff that actually people use. Um, I don't see anyone using this stuff, so it's really, really unfortunate. Um, and then finally, we do have a new hairstyle. Now, this is already in the game right now for like 240 cartel coins. I'm, I don't really care about hairstyles, but actually there was a lot of buzz about this. And I think it was a pretty popular item. A lot of people bought it and started using it on their characters. And then the other thing is we're getting a new pack that is similar to the Imperial Agent pack we saw for like 2,000 cartel coins. Uh, basically, what it does is it gives you a lot of armor and mounts and weapons that are themed towards one class. And so this one seems to be themed for the Jedi class. It's giving you the Blade Master lightsabers, which are basically the Obi-Wan Kenobi lightsabers. Um, 
It's giving you an ugly mount that you shouldn't be too crazy about, but the armor set, the Exiled Master's armor set, that is probably the nicest Jedi armor set. I know a lot of people don't like the hood, I don't mind it, uh, so it's easily a really good Jedi Knight pack, but you could probably pick up the items off the GTN for less than what the Cartel coins are going to be worth. So it's not going to be really worth to buy the pack itself, but um, but nonetheless, I mean, it's there for um, for anybody that maybe doesn't have the credits or whatever. And then finally, we'll end it with talking about a new Grand Pack that seems to be coming on the Cartel Market. This is going to be the Grand Explorers Pack. As you can see from the image, a stockpile of some of the rarest and nicest items in the game right now. We have a Jet Pack that sells for like 20 million plus. Uh, the Cornicer Monocycle, which is just an absolutely fantastic mount that hasn't been reskinned to death, meaning it is super, super rare and expensive right now. We have the Ridge Hunter Rancor and then the Havoc Squads armor set. So these are just, you know, awesome, awesome items. And the reason I'm so excited about this Grand Pack is because the Explorer Packs, as I mentioned in, in previous videos, is my favorite shipment. Uh, it contains some of the nicest armor sets that were both gold, silver, and bronze rarity. It contains some of the nicest mounts. The weapons were absolutely fantastic. So needless to say, I'm super excited about this Grand Pack. I just really hope the RNG is going to be good because with the Grand Nightlife Pack, we saw such amazing RNG. That is how the RNG should be. I mean, I was getting a gold item uh, every two to three Grand Packs. Uh, then unfortunately with the first acquisitions grand pack and the um, what was the other one the the grand shadows grand pack uh, the RNG was not too good I mean you could open up eight nine grand packs not get a single gold item so that was really really unfortunate I really hope that they change the RNG and make it as good as it was with the grand nightlife pack because then that would mean that these grand packs are actually worth it and uh, people if they have the money should actually buy these things because your the chances of you either hitting a jackpot item and making a ton of credits or just getting something really nice that you would actually use on your characters is just really high so I'm excited about that grand pack anyways I do hope you guys enjoyed the video if you stayed all the way till the end, thank you so much for you know, watching my videos. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I'm really excited to dialogue with you about this because this is actually some stuff I'm really excited about. We're not seeing a ton of reskins. We're not seeing ugly items coming into the game. We're seeing a lot of actually new and exciting stuff. Hopefully, Bioware is uh, you know, making the change to try to improve their cartel packs a little bit by giving us less junk, more of the stuff that we've been asking for, and stuff like that. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.